and it's done by hey 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 there we go fireworks it's a workout i guess i'm gonna have a build the appetite get any exercise oh yeah so this is a lot look at this line they should tell That's not where we're trying to go. We're trying to go there. Oh, I made it. it uh, got seated. I downed a little Stella at the sidebar first, just to kind of cool me down, because it's 110 degrees outside. Yeah, this is a sidebar area. Uh, you could grab a little drink before sitting down, or this is like a, a waiting area. Got the table, we good. Here's a green monster, or is the Wrigley Field here on the side? That's the menu. All right, and it's a little dark in here, but I will provide a thorough and most detailed video of Joel Robichon Las Vegas from the moment I walk in to the moment I walk out. It's the only Las Vegas restaurant to be awarded three Michelin stars, so think of this video as 10 minutes per one Michelin star. Enjoy. This one seems the most simple because you don't have to select anything. They'll just bring it out, okay? And I hope you could hear me. I got to whisper a little bit here. <laughs> and they did tell me, you know, let me do this. They did tell me that, uh, you know, whatever you select, you're going to get your money's worth. So it's good to go. Um, so, and he said it in a manner where, okay, I believe it. And I am not opting for the wine pairing. I don't know how to drink wine, but they do have a extensive wine list uh, ranging from around $100 all the way up to $60,000. This is a $375 option. Dessert section. And there you go. Cool. That's the menu. I decided on this. The uh, I felt like this one was just simple. Got to bring a little bit of everything and you go from there. That is a butter. Okay. Um, oh. That's butter. Let's see how this goes. It's not cheese. I've been making those mistakes, but that's butter. Miniature natural baguette. So it's sweet. It's got herb brioche. And that's another reason why I like this. Natural yeah. baguette yeah. and olive And baguette. it used to be the yeah. most popular wine in the United States. Fat yeah. campagne. Yeah. As well as a comte cheese baguette. Okay. Olive oil roulade yeah. and miniature croissant. Gotcha. Now lift the ones at the bottom of the Okay. This one is a Gruyere cheese brioche. Wow. Okay. Following two are saffron brioche gotcha. and basil brioche. They all look good, man. I don't know what to do here. <laughs> I'm on the spot here. We don't make it easy. Yeah. This is a milk bread. Milk bread? Okay, cool. All right, I'm going to pick one. All right, y'all. Check it out. So this is some kind of, a, you know, Petrosian caviar which is, uh, remember Petrosian Bar at Bellagio? Maybe they go to Petrosian, hey, give me some caviar and Bellagio Petrosian hooks them up. I'm not sure how this goes, but uh, apparently, look at this. 
You see the little fine dots, the green dots? They got them meticulously put it in. And it supposedly takes like 20 to 25 minutes to do this, which I think it's on the fast side, right? All right, you know what? Let me, let me, I'm not exactly sure how to get this, but let's go into this. Uh, can I eat it together? Okay. Break that up. Right. And again, guys, I do recommend Petrosin at the uh, at the Bellagio. Just go on to off topic a little bit. But he did suggest you eat this together. So let me take a bite. One bite. Everyone knows the rules. Okay. Okay. Let me give one of these a try. Oh yeah, this is uh, so far so good. You know it's good when you know the food is salty, but it's not offensive. It's just full of flavor. Ariel, I'm gonna start off with the basic. This is the basic. It's like panda sal, I guess. Again, shout out to my Filipino friends. I'm gonna dip it in here a little bit. One bite, everyone knows the rules. The bacon? Okay. I'll just eat it straight first, huh? The bread here are baked in house every day and it tastes like it. A little baguette. Kind of like the one at the Bardot almost. It's like a it's like a miniature size or the Bardot miniature size. This is warm and fresh. I remember this coming here last time for this. Uh, I'm like, okay, cute little bread. Let's take it out. collection of dishes, the chef would recommend that you begin with a dish to the upper left. This is a sphere of tomato candy, which is filled with gazpacho and served over tomato water gelée. The chef's recommendation is that you try to eat that tomato candy all in one bite, as it pops, and it's best if it pops inside your mouth rather than outside. Now, when you're finished with that, you may approach the dish to the upper right. This is a chilled Maine lobster salad finished with sheets of turnip and nutmeg. What's up, not me? The final dish is a salad of violet artichoke accompanied by carpaccio foie gras and finished with shaved Parmesan cheese. And again, you simply enjoy these in the order which I described. And eat that all in one bite. All right. Got that ready? So the main suggestion was pop this in your mouth at once. So I'm going to do that right now. Ready? Let's go. Oh yeah. For all you uh, cherry tomato lovers. Okay, cool. Look how pretty this is, right? Let's see what the others are. Come on. There you go. Wow. These are like baby tomatoes here. Yeah, that's not grass. Really? Congratulations. Thank you for celebrating with us tonight. We don't have to eat that, right? <laughs> Alright, let's do this. Maybe that's like a cinnamon or that's like a wonton. I'm not sure. Just kidding. Alright, y'all. That took about seven minutes to eat. That was good. Ooh, that was good. This one here, which is robed in filo pastry, you can use your fingers to pick it up by the bone, dip it into the sauces of parsley and garlic coulis, okay. and when you're finished, to your right, it's a little oshaberry with uh, lemongrass water. You can use this towel to cleanse your fingers. Gotcha. Enjoy this first as it's both time and temperature sensitive. Gotcha. 
Once you've completed that, you can approach both of these dishes more or less at the same time. They are intended to be enjoyed together. Gotcha. To your right is a, a foam of ginger, which is finishing an eggplant velouté with cumin. And to your upper left is zucchini with chorizo mint. You know what? This is time sensitive. Let's do this one right here. So I'm going to put this on this side here. Get some uh, some sauce on it. Okay. This is a frog leg. Huh? So, uh, what's what's the prince? Don't don't turn into Prince Charming on me. All right, ready? Let's go. Oh wow, mm. that frog leg. Uh, how do I describe this? It tastes like chicken. <laughs> no, that was nice. Let's, let's delve into this a little bit. It almost tastes like a very subtle curry of some sort. At the very end, yeah, you do taste the, uh, yeah, curry at the very end. It starts with curry and ends with curry. Hey, shout out to the greatest shoot of all time, Stephen Curry. Speaking of curry, uh, Stephen Curry's wife, Aisha Curry, she has a restaurant here called International Smoke. A little shout out to that. I haven't tried it yet, but that's on my to-do list. Looks like some zucchinis. It looks like there's a hobak, <laughs> which is like uh, some kind of zucchini, right? This has a little spiciness to it. It tastes like Asian food almost. Same with this, since it tastes like curry. Maybe this is Asian restaurant? I'm not sure. And then these two kind of go together. And literally, they go together. And when it conjoins in your mouth, it's like, okay, now I get it. But individually, you might be like, eh, what's going on here? You gotta put it together. It's great egg risotto, mm -hmm. and it gives you vinaigrette. Okay. Langoustine. So okay. I recommend the scallop, pan seared with a uh, okay. lemongrass uh, foam. On top, you have some black olives, tomatoes, and basil. Gotcha. And the chef recommends you to enjoy this Hokkaido uh, sea urchin with a warm lobster flan and foam made with fennel. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, y'all, let's go into the langust langoustine. It's almost like a tempura, okay? And they said this was a scallop. Let's go one bite. Jeez, there's a flavor in there. I know what it is, but I just don't know the label to it right now. Do you have a favorite so far? In terms of these three, or in terms of those three, you know they've all just been. I haven't gone into that oh, yet, but I'm good. trying to figure out this because there's a flavor profile that I recognize and it's very distinct, mm -hmm. and I just can't put a label to it right now. I, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about it after. Okay, yeah, but I, I think I know exactly what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And this is, I think, uni. It smells like uni. Let me see. Yeah, there's some sort of a uni there. Figure out what that one adds out. Yeah, you know, let me give it one more try. Damn, it 
this is right there. What? Oh, it's coconut. <laughs> That's so stupid. It's coconut. All right. Bye. This course. Well, some of the other course. It, it there's a lot of um, like Korean, Chinese, Japanese, I mean even like Indian curry influence into this. Uh, so it's like it's international. Yeah, it's good. Black hot is caramelized and finished with a tweel of crystallized lobster roe, accompanied by wilted spinach and finished with a sauce of Malabar black pepper. Thank you. Let's give this a try. Okay. Oh, excuse you. Excuse you over there. Wow. Okay. Damn. I guess you do need to go to the restroom. <laughs> Let's do a smell test. I'm guessing it's going to be like a uh, teriyaki. I don't know. Let's try it. Oh yeah, the cod is so buttery, and um, and yes, it does taste like you know very refined teriyaki. Um, the flavor profiles are very Japanese, a little Korean. Oh baby, 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 bok choy. Yep, that's bok choy. Or, you know, my little thought here is, what's the difference between you know a three hundred dollar meal, this in this case it's almost five hundred dollar meal, versus you know a thirty dollar, you know meal at at the corner. It all comes down to the sauce, I think. It's the same sauce. Let's say we'll just call this teriyaki. It's the same sauce, but. It has a similar taste, but it's just different. This is rubber shell mashed potatoes. Oh, right? Mashed potato over there, right? So that's the squab? Yeah, the okay. squab. Inside the breast, that's the leg. Okay. And it's with foie gras. Foie gras right there. Gotcha. Wrap with bacon. Wrap with bacon, thank you. And the infamous. And that's the rubber shell mashed potato. It looks like a dumpling, but it's not, guys, okay? <laughs> Let's taste this. Dip a little bit there. Okay. That's salt. Uh, that's pepper. That's salt. Okay. All right. One bite. Everyone knows the rules. Cover your ears if you're squirmish, because it's gonna sound like I'm biting through the bones. This one is like almost like a Thanksgiving meal, it seems like. Because if it's this is cherry, it'll have that like cranberry kind of sauce. And you got the mashed potatoes over there. Um, come on, let's put this go. Mm. Some salt. I don't know what this is. I guess that's that. A little bit of that. Okay, so this is foie gras. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. You need some tartness to offset the strong foie gras. Hey, look, I made another mini dumpling. Hey, shout out to Michael Chen. Strictly dumpling. So this one had like a American uh, taste to it. Okay, so we're going worldwide with this. So I think this means we're coming back home. Uh -huh. 
Coming back to Vegas. Wow, this mashed potato. The infamous Robochon mashed potatoes. Mm. Tastes like the clouds, you know, in Mario Brother game. Yeah. The gyro is an intermezzo or palate cleanser before the main dessert. Okay. Uh, to the left is a little sphere of calamansi, uh, which is served with a Thaiberry coulis. And to your right is a banana passion fruit curd or custard, which is accompanied by rum granite and finished with a foam or coconut. Uh, chef would recommend you change the dish to the right first. Okay. Finish with a calamansi sphere last. Kalamatsu, huh? Kalamatsu. Hey guys, shout out to all the Filipino friends out there. So let's go. They suggested go right first, so let's try this. Okay. Well, oh, banana cream style going on. So I'm guessing this is it. Some kind of kalamatsu. Ooh. Ooh, oops, sorry. Is this a one shot? Maybe it's just a one shot. All right, let's just put it all in the mouth. Let's go. One shot. <laughs> Mushroom is made out of white chocolate, chantilly cream, and cherries. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Remember, I was talking about the clouds in Mario Super Mario. Well, this is the ultimate Super Mario. All right, let's go. Ooh. Can you see that, guys? Bam! Mushroom. What is this? Let's eat it together. Honestly, I don't know what's going on, but I think there's ice cream down there. All right, guys, we're almost done here. Okay. Fresh every day. Have give or take maybe 35 different candies. Wow. So tonight I have. Uh, Passion fruit marshmallow with mango coconut. Yeah, feel free to stand up for you. Come over here. So uh, we also have a, a violet cassis macaroon. Cassis, okay, so. Caramels with vanilla. Mm -hmm. uh, nougat with nuts. Dome with chocolate ganache. Uh, little chocolates mm -hmm. of, uh, oh, they will change the arrangement. Right. Let's see if I can find them. Uh, we have yuzu, passion fruit, uh, frangelico, coffee. Uh, vanilla chai and uh, raspberry. Oh, they all sound good. Maybe they are good. Yeah, those are, yeah. Uh, okay. Tropical fruit gelé okay. and candied orange peel dark chocolate. Cherry grass for the hazelnut beans as well as raspberry cheesecake. Coffee religious. Chocolate religious. Cannelé, a little Bordeaux cake. Mm -hmm. Lemon meringue tart as well as. Uh, Pistachio macaroon, raspberry macaroon, coconut almond pineapple de quoz. Okay. I don't, know, big ones. I don't know what's going on, but. Chocolate truffle. Coconut white chocolate truffle. Pistachio truffle. Uh, raspberry buttercream with layers of chocolate in an opera cake. A Snickers tart. And oh, Snickers. That's for sure. Snickers for sure, right? Yeah, cool. Yeah. Raspberry tart. All right. Okay, just give me a moment, guys. Let me see how this goes. All right, guys. So from the trolley, you know, you just pick your stuff and don't be too greedy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they all awesome. make this fresh and they got some tea here. Um, yeah, so far this is, yeah, this has been a cool experience. All right, let's start off with the, uh, the ladybug. Are you gonna eat me or just look at me? I don't know. Um, this is catching my eyes. Cool, let's go. Let's give this a try.
think they pluck this every day from the uh, from down there. Andrew, who's helping me out here, told me that this was uh, Mr. Rubichon's favorite. Okay, so I don't know if I get a prize for picking this or not, but uh, kind of looks like uh, one of those. Uh, what's that little character in that little famous movie? That's called Star or something. Star. Stuff like this right something. here. It's it's just just executed way better, and that's the difference I think uh, from here and let's just say Picasso. Because um, at Picasso, they'll give you a couple of nuggets of these, but to be honest, sometimes it doesn't taste fresh. It tastes a little stale. They just throw you maybe three of them, and there you go, type of thing. You know, I'm not knocking Picasso. Again, remember, it's almost half the price is here. Um, their food is great. You know, the food here is great. But Picasso has a little advantage of their Bellagio fountains and that kind of good stuff. You know, here, yeah, it's a cool setting. But in terms of interior atmosphere, uh, yeah, you know, you gotta give it to Picasso. I mean, with the Picasso art, and just the entrance of Picasso where you got to go down the escalators and plus it's located at Bellagio here it's this is kind of just located part of the restaurant row here bottom line if you want the fountain show and you want to you know kind of skim down on your food price a little bit Picasso but for any other all reason if money is you know not a big issue and you want a little bit of a better food taste just come here yeah. give it a try yeah that's the price for everything and surprisingly it's well worth it even for a cheap dude like me um yeah this is not including tax or tip no not not including tip but uh there you go this is, well, this is, yeah, this is like a parting gift it's like a he said some kind of a pineapple cake or something like that. Okay. All right, come on. Let's try to whisper out here. All right, let's go. The menu I enjoyed will take about three and a half hours. Restaurant seats about 40 guests at a given time. 40 to 60 guests will be rotated during dinner service, which is almost one-to-one -one ratio because about 40 to 50 staff members from front of the house to the back of the house are on duty per day. And it's the only restaurant awarded three Michelin stars in Las Vegas. Yeah, it's not that big. It's just good enough size to come. And a big thank you to Andrew. Service here is the best, second to none. Hey, look who's here. David Copperfield. My uncle took me to watch him back in like 1986. And I was mesmerized. And I never went to another magic show after that. So, hey, shout out, David. All right, guys, let's go. Cool. Let's go. Side action, private table here. If you guys want to ever join me, let me know. Okay. And this is a must. And then here's the lounge area. This is where I needed to take that little break. Before sitting down for dinner. All right, let's go. Ready? Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was good. Yeah, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, y'all. Oh, wow. Yeah, we, we, we made it. And one more thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come again. Thank you.